Hi there, my name is Levina, and I'm going to be overviewing North America as part of the Rangelands of the World Exploration Project. So a little about geography. North America is located at latitude range 9 north to 85 north, longitude range 65 west to 165 east. The area encompasses nearly 25 million square kilometers, which accounts for roughly 16.5% of the world's land area. Did you know? The highest peak in North America is Denali, also known as Mount McKinley, at an astonishing 6,194 meters, or over 20,000 feet elevation. The lowest point is Death Valley, located in California and Nevada. It's located at 86 meters below sea level. Some of the major rivers of North America are depicted on this map. Uh, include the Mississippi, the McKenzie River, Ohio, Colorado, Yukon, Rio Grande, and Missouri. Did you know? So much of the water extracted from the Rio Grande River is, um, so much is extracted that it ceases to flow to the sea for much of the year. This map depicts some of the major mountain ranges of North America. In the center of uh, the rangeland country is the Rocky Mountains, and it's bounded on the coast by the Coastal Range, the Sierra Nevada Cascade Range, and other important ranges um, span in Alaska and into Mexico, including the Sierra Madres. This map depicts the major des deserts of North America. Um, they are broken down into cold deserts, which includes the Great Basin region, and the warm deserts, which include the Mojave, Chihuahuan, and Sonoran. Did you know? The wettest place in North America is Hawaii, Hawaii's Mount Biulaula, and the mountain elevation uh, is, oh, excuse me, it's the wettest place, so 11,684 millimeters, uh, or over 450 inches of rain a year. Rain actually falls there nearly every day of the year, spanning from 330 to 360 days a year. And technically, even though Hawaii is not part of the United is part of the United States, it's not considered part of the North American continent, but we included it anyway. The driest place is Death Valley in California. The extreme rain shadow effect of the Sierra Nevada mountain range only accounts for about 38 millimeters of annual rainfall a year. This map depicts some of the large water bodies of North America. North America is bounded on the west by the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean to the east, and many bays and seas abound on the coastal edges. The Gulf of Mexico is also very important for uh, many of the weather patterns that we have across the continent, and some of our major lakes are the Great Lakes, uh, bounding between U.S. and Canada, and the Great Salt Lake in Utah, and the Great Bear Lake and Great Slave Lake of Canada. Populations and demographics. My name is Molly Kovic and I will be exploring this with you. So North America is made up of 24 countries and contains 529 million people. Did you know? Bermuda has the greatest population density of all the countries in North America at 1,200 and 26 persons per square mile, or kilometer, excuse me. On the other hand, Greenland is the least densely populated country at just 0 0.03 persons per square kilometer. Population. The most population, here depicts the most populated countries and the most populated cities within these charts. The most populated country is the United States with a total population uh, of 56 percent for North America, um, followed closely by Mexico and Canada. The most populated cities. Surprisingly, Nor Mexico City in Mexico is the most populated city within North America, followed by New York City, Los Angeles, and Toronto, Canada. Lights at night. This 
is a cool depiction of population within the North American continent. Okay, so a little about the ecology of North America. The vegetation types of North America are very diverse. This map depicts the rangelands of North America. You'll notice the grassland ecosystems spanning the center of the continent that are largely there because of the Rocky Mountain Range, um, and then our desert ecosystems that bound between southern United States and Mexico. Did you know? The Great Plains ecosystem actually covers 1.6 million square kilometers, making up more than a quarter of the United States land surface. This map's depicting a little bit about the soils of North America. The major soil types in the grassland ecosystems of our rangeland soil types is the mollusols, and you'll see that that green area corresponds largely with where the plains ecoregions are located. And our deserts, or aridosols, are also located over those desert ecosystems that span between the southern United States and Mexico. And entosols are our younger soils, so they're mostly on those alluvial fronts. Did you know? Soil scientists have actually identified over 70,000 types of soil in the United States. Some interesting plants to turn your attention to. Western yarrow is a very common plant in western rangelands, and it's a really important food source for several big game species. And one of the interesting points about it is that it has many um, ethnobotanic properties and is used in a lot of traditional medicine. Another interesting plant is the caribou moss. It's a light-colored lichen found in the alpine tundra regions. It's a really important part of the diet of caribou and was also really important to a lot of the Native Americans. Did you know? The champion saguaro is the largest known saguaro at 13.8 meters tall with a girth of 3.1 meters. It's found in the southwestern United States in that desert ecoregion. A couple of interesting plants, the rattle, um, excuse me, interesting animals. The rattlesnake is known for the rattle at the end of its tail that's used as a, thought of as a warning device. It gives a little jingle when things are um, coming near. Um, it's found in a lot of rangeland habitats, including prairies, deserts, and open forests. Another interesting animal is the jackrabbit. It has really distinctive long ears and long powerful rear legs that allow it to run some pretty um, fast speeds up to 64 kilometers per hour or 40 miles per hour, which is very fast for such a small creature. It ranges all the way from Canada down through central Mexico. Did you know? Caribou migrate the furthest of any terrestrial mammal. They travel nearly 5,000 kilometers a year. Caribou are also known as reindeer. Now let's explore some ecological concerns within the North American continent. Ecological concerns re related to the rangelands of North America include invasive species, which are the noxious weeds and alter altered fire regimes and the loss of native plant species. This also, or the, another ecological concern is fragmentation. Fragmentation uh, creates loss of habitat and is caused by urban and agricultural development. Another ecological concern is endangered species within the North American continent. This includes salmon and bull trout, the Atwater's greater prairie chicken, and the black-footed ferret. These species are found within the rangelands of the North American continent. Here shows a very good depiction of habitat fragmentation. As you can see, those are actually um, agricultural circles. So uh, all of that land is used for agriculture and you can see the areas that are uh, rangeland that are not being disturbed. Did you know? California condor. In 1987, only 22 were found left in the wild. Today, there are over 
300. Their wingspans are greater or up to 2.74 meters or 10 feet. They are the rarest and largest flying bird within North America. These birds are worth between one and four million due to the research and raising that has to be, um, it has to happen. This concludes our exploration of the North American continent.